Well, hello, model car fans. Welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Raoul, and uh, here I wanted to show you uh, um, a video here of uh, polishing paint, um, some color setting, some polishing. I've been asked about it by a few of you, so I figured uh, um, since I have this project going, um, and it has a few boogers in it, and since it's black, it's really easy to show you on this one. So I figured this would be a good opportunity to take the time to show you. Now, um, this is a 87 Buick GNX that uh, I'm slowly working on one of my projects here and it's clear coated and as you can see especially right here I've got some boogers in the clear coat that are in the in the trunk here so I'm going to show you how to polish that out um, roof is pretty good there's a little bit of haze from just handling and cleaning and uh, some of the detail work I've been doing to it so this thing's been getting worked on and polished and are, are detailed and getting ready I'm almost ready to start gluing the windows and stuff in but I've kind of held off and was waiting to show you how to do this and uh, some of the things that you're going to need to do it. So I've got some um, micro mesh polishing pads here. Here's the, the charts. But I generally start at 4,000. So here's the 4,000 grit teal. This is 6,000, 8,000, and then 12,000. Um, so those are the polishing pads. And I've got a little bit of water here with Dawn soap in it. I prefer to use Dawn soap because it doesn't have any uh, conditioners or hand lotions in it. Palmolive does. Um, so that, that kind of helps. And uh, I'll actually toss that in right now and get it to start soaking a little bit. Uh, it doesn't take much on these. I got a microfiber polish cloth here. I've got a regular um, towel here for uh, wiping. And then here's uh, some Tamiya polishing compounds the coarse, the fine, and the finished polish. Um, these are great. And then I use them with the microfiber, but that's to finish it up. So that's the, the finishing stages if you, and I may not even use coarse on this one. I may just use fine and finish because um, at 12,000 grit, the last grit on this um, takes out quite a bit. And then the last thing I got here is some masking tape. The main reason for the masking tape is like, I'm not really gonna do this whole car you know, like when you look, I got a couple of spots on the hood I may deal with, um, but not very many. They're very, very mild, but black really shows everything. So that's why um, I'm doing this one. But on the trunk, I got it really good right there. So hopefully the camera's picking that up and you can see that. But the, the main reason for the masking tape here is to protect the areas that I'm working. So I'll tear off some masking tape and I'm actually going to tear it in little strips here because I'm going to cover the hinge right here and then I'm going to cover the spoiler. Any of the lips basically I don't want it getting caught on and I'm going to fold this over. And then we'll cover this area and then right at this body line. Basically just protecting, creating a barrier and protecting that, those areas. So main reason for that is when you're using the aggressive one, I want to protect any of the, th the things so I don't go through the clear. And then I'll just start sanding smooth it down and this works fairly quickly <clears throat> you can see the progress see it's starting to, to knock them down there so we'll keep doing that normally I'd be doing this in the bathroom right over the, the sink um, that's just me normally but since I'm trying to film here and I got the camera mount over my table I've got to do it this way for you guys so that you can see it which makes it a little awkward for me to be doing it this way so that you can see it. Um, and if you get any, the colors start coming off, that tells you right away that you went through the clear. It should be, you know, transparent or maybe even a little white. But you can see they're starting to knock down there. So there you go. They're not completely gone, but they're getting knocked down. And sometimes I don't really worry about getting them all the way down. 
Oop, and there's the tape starting to curl. And keep drying your work and checking, seeing how you're doing, where you're at. And there you can see how the, the tape is protecting, but where it curled up, it's starting to hit the body line there. So I'm going to put another piece of tape there. As you get finer than the, the grits, then I'll start not worry about the body lines as much because it will uh, start to go over there as you polish those areas. But as the grits get finer, you take off less and less material, so it becomes less and less of a, um, an issue to worry about. And this trunk area is pretty got got some pretty big ones, which is why I'm doing it on this one. Like sometimes I don't do it. I may not hit all of them. I may polish a little bit of them out. See if you can see them there. They're almost gone or flattened out. There's a little bit of depressions right there. Now they will move on to one of the other ones here. <clears throat> Let's get them all wet. And you don't have to spend a whole lot of time on this because it, it'll improve fairly quickly. Let's see, now we're moving on to 6,000 grit. In the water and soap starts to get under the tape and makes it harder to stick. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Get it up there close, and you still kind of see the rings, but she's not bad. All right, let's do some. Let's see. Royal blue is 8,000 grit. Okay. See the dullness is starting to come off and you can see where it's hitting the, the body lines there. So I'm going to pull this off and this off. And then uh, gray is the 12,000 grit. And then having the soap in here kind of keeps the sandpaper cleaner and it also helps uh, um, lubricate the area you're sanding less chance of gouging so there's a small amount of Dawn soap in there and I go a little over more of the area when I do that We think they're pretty much gone. Doing 
and then I'll, I'll do a little bit of circling motions, sanding motions. I don't put a whole lot of pressure on there, just let the sandpaper do its work. Just make sure it's flat on there, but I don't put a whole lot of pressure. Dry it off. And you can see it right there. And it's not 100% perfect, but you can go over and keep polishing the whole car if you want. Um, but they're definitely knocked down and they're definitely a lot better. Now, we'll, uh, let's do a little bit of the... Actually, we will use a little bit of the course here. Polish it up. This is where you use the microfiber. Just do a small amount here on the corner. And again in a swirling motion. Flip it over and get a drier spot and you can kind of see it's polished up a little better. This step could take a couple of applications as well. And this stuff will dry and be in the cracks, the crevices of the trunk lid. So I'll get a toothbrush to, when I wash and get it out of there. That's really starting to go away. Black shows everything, so one of the reasons why I'm using this particular build, you see my fingerprints are all over it. And I'll get them cleaned off later. Non-stop cleaning of the fingerprints, but that's okay. Next one. Now move over to a different spot. This is the fine polishing compound. It'll get rid of some more of these swirls and scratches. I get a little nervous when doing something like this while the body's flexing in your hands. I really don't want this wheel flare to break off because it's glued on and painted. So be gentle with it. See the shine is pretty much reappearing and kind of matching the haze and everything that's on the roof. Oops. And let's do one more. Some of this black you're seeing, I had already flat blacked around the window and I wasn't really thinking about the polishing step when I did that, so I'll have to reapply that.
So she's starting to look really good. And I did this to the, the trunk and the roof of that uh, 69 uh, Baldwin Motion, not Baldwin Motion, the 69 uh, Yanko uh, Chevelle. Because I had some boogers in the trunk of that one as well. And I did a couple on the roof, so I had to polish that on that one too. So this is this is exactly what I did, same steps. So for now I'm showing you. And uh, black shows everything, so this is going to show everything. It's really hard to polish black. Because it seems like no matter what you do with black, you'll get fine scratches in it, even from the microfiber towels and any of the other polishing compounds. And then you can wax it get it to go away that way all right so there's a little bit of the fine the finished compound let's do a little bit more get another spot here So there we go. Looking pretty good. I'll do another couple of uh, polishes on that, but uh, that knocked them down and got them pretty much out of there. So they definitely don't stand out as much. And then I gotta finish cleaning and polishing some of the rest of it. But uh, that's looking a lot better than it did a minute ago. But that gives you an idea in the steps and take your time and I rushed a little bit in between them here for time restraints here I'm um, just squeezing it all in but uh, you take your time and go between each steps and you'll get it uh, polished out even better but uh, she's looking pretty good I've got a couple more areas I've actually got one right here that you can see I gotta take care of that one and then there's a couple right here clean off the body here so I got one right here and um, for the most part this one's this one's really clean but you know usually I just worry about the roof the trunk and the hood because when they're sitting on a model uh, display or at a show that's what stands out the ones on the sides don't stand out near as well and you can see they're kind of the wax is drying in the, the cracks there and I'll brush all that out but uh, so there you go there's uh, pretty much all the steps there too cleaning and polishing and getting a little of the buggers out of the clear it doesn't take a whole lot of time but if you're doing a whole car you know it could be a couple of hours pretty much it for that so you guys have an idea what goes on there so uh thank you for uh subscribing and tuning in and and watching all my stuff and i do appreciate the comments and the shares and you guys you have a wonderful day